All right. Uh, welcome to Google Drawings. Let's get creative. I am uh, super excited. If you're tuning in to check this out, I want to share some tips and tricks for one of my favorite tools that I use quite frequently. That's Google Drawings. I use it to create a, a, a number of resources and we're going to talk about that. So this is my first live PD session. I decided I'd try something different um, and stream this through YouTube. So if you're tuning in live right now, fantastic. Thanks for joining me. And if you're watching this in the future, thanks for uh, watching the archive. So um, I'm using a new tool um, that is called StreamYard that's letting me stream this directly to YouTube. Pretty cool uh, interface, but this is my first time doing this. So we're gonna see how it goes. So if, if, uh, if I flub or goof or anything, it's just cause I'm getting used to the interface. Interface is very slick and easy to use, but doing controlling a, a live stream and presenting at the same time is a new challenge. So thanks so much for uh, joining me for this and let's dive in. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is uh, Jennifer Hall and I'm an educational technology specialist uh, with Atlanta Public Schools. I'm a former middle school language arts teacher and now uh, serve the district supporting multiple middle and high schools um, with professional development for teachers and pushing in and working uh, with students and developing projects. And so I use Google Drawings for a couple of projects we're gonna talk about. I'm a certified innovator and trainer, love all things Google and uh, took Tony Vincent's classy graphics class and learned some awesome uh, tips from him as well. So um, goals for our time today, uh, we're gonna learn some tips and tricks for using Google Drawings. You're going to learn some ideas for using Google Drawings to foster the five C's. Um, we talk about the five C's, communication, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking. And that fifth uh, C for me is choice. Giving students choice is very much about empowering them as learners. And uh, we're going to explore the features of Google Drawings. So people often ask, well, why Google Drawings? And uh, how? what are some ways you can use it in the classroom? And there's so many ways you can use it and this is not at all an exhaustive um list but you know obviously google uh you can use drawings for graphic organizers interactive posters comic strips infographics uh to annotate on images and we'll talk about how you can do that uh to create timelines uh digital manipulatives which are great for your um emerging learners if you're elementary middle or high um to create newsletters i use this is uh google drawings is what i use to create my weekly tech tips 411 um, e-newsletter. And uh, you'll see a little bit of behind the scenes on that. Um, it's great for creating memes, for photo editing. There's some options in there. And to make it an interactive whiteboard, and it's great for tutorials and quick sheets, all sorts of ways you can use it. So I fell in love with Google Drawings when I created this. This is my first image uh, that I created, which was uh, a green screen video setup. And I this is completely from Shapes. And that's when I realized the power of using Google Drawings to create what I wanted to create. Um, and over here to the right is my most recent, unreleased uh, Google uh, Drawings edition of my Tech Tips 411. This goes out next week. Um, and as you can see, it's a template that allows me to create a lot of cool stuff that go inside there. So other ways that you can use it, when we talk about communication, thinking about um, creating infographics um, and logos and uh, graphics that you might want to use on your website or for Twitter or anything else. Just so many options for communication uh, because we want our students to be able to articulate them uh, and communicate effectively. Being able to create infographics and visuals is a great practice. Um, I love the collaboration element of it because uh, I can create and design something and then I can get feedback. So as I mentioned, I took Tony Vincent's class um, and he uses the comment feature and this is something you can use with your students for students or the students can use to collaborate um, on commenting, so it's awesome. So student creations to me is my favorite thing is to see what kids will come up with. So a couple of years ago, I started a science um, project with one of the teachers uh, in sixth grade and they were doing paper drawing of um, posters, NASA inspired posters, but we have students that struggle with, they have great ideas in their head, but they, they don't do as well with putting it on paper. So they often will say, well, I can't draw, this is not my thing. So with Google Drawings, that what it does is it allows students to be able to manipulate and create with shapes what's in their mind if they're not you know, great drawers. I'm not a great drawer at all, but I think I can do pretty good with 
um, things I'm creating in Google Drawings. So this is um, some examples of the poster project. The kids had never seen Google Drawings before. And these were one uh, examples that after they finished the product um, where they had to design a poster uh, about their planet. And these are ones from just a one hour session with the students and just showing them how they can use shapes and shading and color to create on this blank canvas their vision for their posters. Um, this is these two right here um, are from the first year we did it and I was just blown away with how creative the kids were. I mean we're talking visualizing planets with shapes not bringing in clip art but using their own. Now there, some of the kids used a little bit of clip art but for the most part it's original work. So to me this is a great way for your students to be able to be creative, okay? And also critically think. So I've also created some other templates, including like a video storyboard, but I do a lot of video production projects. And this is a great way for you to be able to storyboard out with, with simple shapes and text, what your video is gonna be about. Or you can do like an SOS, the Spotlight on Strategies, the 25 things you didn't know. This is actually a template that's color coded uh, for students to complete this in a collaborative workspace. One of my other favorite things that fosters the uh, critical thinking skills is to create memes. And this is a template I created inside of drawings that allows students to create their own uh, memes. Some other examples, uh, working with social studies. Um, the teacher had created a task where the students had to create a travel poster. Um, for their country and it had to include the name of the location. It had to have a tagline um, and it had to have some sort of visual to indicate, you know, whether it was a geographic feature or some sort of symbol that people go, oh, that represents that location. So this is the example that I created uh, for this sixth grade social studies class. And these are all original shapes, putting it together to create the, um, well-known uh, telephone booth from London and the big red bus. Uh, to the right here is um, an example of a movie poster that I've created for my Shakespeare Film Fest project. Some other ways you can use Google Drawings um, include, uh, this is a collaborative pad. How, for those of you that have ever used Padlet, I had a teacher that asked me, you know, well, is there anything else besides Padlet? Because Padlet started, you know, you, gotta, you get so many free Padlets and, and you know, I need more than that. Uh, so is there anything like that? And I was like, well, what all features are in Padlet, um, that you would need? And she told me, and it turns out that everything that you can add to a Padlet, you can add inside of a Google drawing. So this is a template that I've created that I call my collab pad, and you can insert images, text, and everything else. And you can share this as a collaborative document with your students. So I worked with teachers, uh, and PDs, and these are just a couple of creations that they've come up with in terms of creating graphic organizers that are just visually interesting, a little bit different than just a basic one in a Google Doc or Microsoft Word document. Um, other great ways to use drawings is that I have created this template for a Google Classroom header um, so that you can customize it and have your own custom header. Now, a lot of the things that I've created, you can also create inside of Google Slides. And I think that Google Slides is like the Swiss army knife of all tools. Google Slides, though, you're creating multiple pages or just one page if you want. Um, and drawings, I just think that some of the finer drawing tools are uh, available inside of drawings. You know, you can actually import a drawing, there's, if you go to a Google slide deck, you'll see insert drawing and you'll pull up a little mini version of a drawings tool. But um, I just think that there's some high level stuff that you can do inside of drawings, but you only have one canvas, only one page, whereas in a slide deck, you'd have more than one. So the other thing that I love uh, using with Google drawings is Bitmojis. I, I kind of am a little obsessed with my Bitmoji, who has been renamed as uh, Genmoji, and she leads a very exciting life. So you can bring in um, your Bitmoji using the Chrome extension, and you can do things like cu to customize it. So this was actually a Fashion Police uh, Bitmoji, and we changed it to be a breakout EDU one. So you can use Google Drawings to customize images. Um, and you can also bring in a lot of different free clip art uh, shapes and 
photos and things like Unsplash, you can bring in photographs and then have students annotate over it using the drawing tools, the, the arrows and the connecting boxes to highlight over graphics, including a science task. Uh, it might be, you know, labeling parts of an animal or parts of a cell, or it might be um, geographic features. So you can bring in clip art or other images and have students be able to annotate on them. So with all of that, so I've talked about all the awesome things that there are about Google Drawings. Now the best part we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually go in and try some activities. So uh, I'm gonna put this up here. So if we look at this, um, this drawing activities option here, you're gonna go to this bit.ly um, and this will be available even after the broadcast. Um, it's gonna force you to make a copy. So I'm actually going to click on this and it asks you, would you like to make a copy of this? And you're gonna say yes. So I'm gonna make a copy of it. Because the best way I've learned to really get comfortable with Google Drawings is to explore and play with Google Drawings. So there's really no right or wrong kind of explore and play around. So this right here is a five task activity. So you're looking at this screen and you're going, oh my goodness, what in the world is this? And uh, so this is actually a um, ginormous, that's a technical word, uh, ginormous um, Google drawing that I've expanded the workspace to be able to put all of these interactive activities on here. Okay. So we're going to dive into that in a minute, but what I want to show you guys is how to get to your own Google drawing, uh, a fresh, clean canvas. So if you're in your Google drive, you can go here and you go to more, and then you're going to go down here to where it says Google drawings. I love all things Google, but it, I, I fuss every time that they hide it. So we go to drive new more and here's Google drawings. And when you do that, it opens up this blank canvas. And you're gonna see that it is just a transparent background and there's a ton of tools up here, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through the tools and features and then that activity that you guys grabbed, I'm gonna walk you through some of those, okay? So here's my blank canvas and I'm gonna name this my little um, drawings demo, okay? So I've got a name here and I'm going to walk across the top here and look at these tools. So very much like any other Google tool uh, or app uh, docs or slides or sheets, you have a lot of the same features. So you've got your file options, but one of the first things you're going to want to do before you do anything else is you're going to think about what am I designing and am I trying to print this or what kind of size do I need this image to be? So if I go down here to file, I'm going to go to page setup and by default, it's a four by three. So think of that as old school TV size of a TV screen, okay? You can customize this and oftentimes you're gonna wanna maybe print this or you're gonna want it to look like a piece of paper and because you're gonna export it as an image as a background for something. So you're gonna go down here to the custom option and you're gonna see it converted that to inches. So I can make this an eight and a half by 11 and now I've got a piece of paper, okay? I could also have it be a, uh, 11 by eight and a half, and then I'm gonna be in landscape versus portrait mode. So notice now I've got this uh, blank canvas, the size of a piece of paper, let's dive in. So I'm gonna go here and I've got um, some editing options here. I've got my view options so I can change some features. Right now I'm at 54%, I can zoom in. So if I really need to get close on a section of it, I can do that. I can show a ruler if you're really a stickler for where things need to line up. I can show some guides that will help you line up stuff. But what's really cool is it's going to actually going to uh, snap to when you add elements. So all the things you can add to a Google drawing include uploading any image from your computer. I can search the web from right in here and search for an element that I want to bring in. So maybe I wanted today is uh, May 1st. It's May Day. I want to pull up, you know, flowers to represent that this is, you know, springtime. Uh, I can search from when within my drive. I can search my Google Photos. I can bring in an image that I've searched already and I have the URL or I can even use the camera feature. And I've used that previously with students when they were doing poems about themselves at the beginning of the school year and they snapped a selfie and then they wrote their poem and they decorated their Google drawing canvas around the photo they took. So those are all of the ways you can add elements in here. 
Notice I can add a text box. So that's just a standard text box and I can drag it around and resize it any way I want. I can add in all of these shapes. So I've got the ability to do kind of just traditional shapes as well as some more 3D design shapes. I can use arrows. So this is where I'm talking about the idea of labeling parts of a cell. You can use the arrows to point to them. Um, if I was trying to explain um, maybe metamorphosis that, you know, how things uh, change, I can use those arrows to show how that works. I can also, if I'm using this as a cartoon tool, I can very easily add in these bubble callouts uh, effects. And if I'm a math teacher and I want to do some really cool visuals with math problems, I can do that as well. Okay, so let's look at some other features here. Um, you can add in charts. So obviously you can put bar graphs, column graphs, any of those if you're interested in using charts um, or diagrams or word art. And word art, really, let's start there. That's kind of where I, when I introduce this to students, I usually say that this is, this is how we get started. So uh, I'm going to say live PD again. First time doing this, this is lots of fun. Uh, I'm gonna type in live PD. Since it's word art, now this has become one block of text that I can move all around. Now, did you notice something? I don't have as many tools right now, but when I select something, look at all these other options that appear. So now that I've added an element and this is word art, I can go up here and now use the paint bucket to fill it. And I can use any solid color if I want. So I can go with blue or I can choose the gradient option and choose kind of a fill in blue if I want to do that, or maybe I want to use red. So uh, let's change it to red. So it stands out really good. Okay. So I can do the gradient option. Now, right now I'm on a transparent background, but maybe I want this to be uh, a complementary color, or I want it just to be, you know, white, like a piece of paper, I can do that. So in order to change the background, I can right click and notice background comes up as an option. So I could change this to white and notice those black, uh, those transparent squares go away. So now this is white, like a piece of paper. I could also change it to, oh, maybe we'll go with a light blue. So you can choose how to do that. Now this is your canvas. So only what's on the canvas is what's going to either print or show when you export your image. So this is a workspace. So oftentimes what makes it cool for interactives is I can put instructions over here or I can put word banks over there um, or other little drag and drop activities over here and it wouldn't be on the original canvas. Okay. So I've got my live PD here and I want to, I want to kind of jazz it up a little bit. I can go over here once I've selected it and I can, uh, increase the border. I can change the border color. I can increase the, the width of the border. I could change it to other funky little lines here if I wanted to. Okay. Uh, let's go back to the standard. I could also go to the fonts and I can select something else that I think is going to, you know, pop a little bit more. It's going to be a little bolder, bolder font. And then when I drag this over, this is what's cool. Notice those red lines. It gives me these guidelines to let me know, like now that is perfectly centered. So for someone who does a lot of designing and is very, I'm very particular about, I want things to be lined up the right way. That can be um, a, a great help. So I've got this on here and there's a couple of options. I can do this to kind of make this pop even more. So I can go to format options and I can add in a drop shadow. I can do some reflection. I can rotate it and change all this stuff. So one of the tricks though I teach the students that they always like when we do our title for our poster uh, for our planets is that I can also just command C, command B, and I can duplicate this and I can go to this back one right here and I can fill this one with a solid black. And now this really has a 3D look to it. And I can use, this is a great trick, if I hit the shift and the arrow key, it moves it one pixel at a time. If I just use the arrow key, it does it five. So if you want it to be very, very precise, hit that shift key and use the arrow to move it left or right, up or down to get it exactly the way you want. So now I'm going to go here and I'm going to select these two elements. So I'm going to uh, left click and I'm going to select both of those elements. And notice I've got two black boxes, excuse me, two blue boxes. And I'm going to right click and now I'm going to choose to group it. Now, if you do that, now when I move this, it's one element. So now I've got this great title on the front here. And um, 
I can move that around. Okay. So moving right along, notice again, I get some more options that show up when I've selected something. Cause I have a lot of times I have students say, but where did all my choices go? Where's my paint bucket? Where, where are my colors? You have to have selected something on the canvas for those features to come up. Okay. So we talked about how you can insert your uh, word art. So the other cool thing is, is that you can add in all of these lines, different connecting lines. So I can do a straight line, arrow, elbow connector, um, curve line, poly line, and the scribble. So what's really cool is I like the curve line because anytime I start a line and I click, it drops a point. So this is how I can freehand do a lot of shapes, but I'm going to connect it. And when I connect it, now I have this original piece of gen artwork here. So I can go now, select my paint bucket. I'm going to fill, this is not going to be pretty in any way. This is, this is just me showing you some different features. So I can go in here and I can fill that with uh, the purple if I want. I can change the outline around it. So now you can have your students create original work inside of Google Drawings. Uh, I have a project coming up with a science teacher and we're talking about them um, kind of showcasing what they've learned from this school year and creating their own original di um, designs. And then we're going to actually use that to create some stop motion videos. So that's when you really level up. So I've got my, my shape here. Okay. I can also use the scribble and draw some free lines and the polyline gives me like the, the ability to, to, you know, have it be linear so I can have like box shapes, straight lines, and it connects. Now notice it remembered the last thing that I did up here. Kind of cool. Now I can also go up here and change this to maybe another color and I've got another new shape. Now here's the other thing. Notice I'm still drawing lines. Students always wonder, well, why is it still doing that? You have to go back up here and tell it to go back to the selector. Now I'm gone back to being a mouse and I'm good. Now, if I want to delete that, I can, but the two most magical buttons are, I can go up here to left and right and undo and redo anything that I have done that I'm not, I, that didn't look right or oops, I didn't mean to delete that. Okay. So notice that drop down is for the different types of lines right here. Okay. And again, so many different shapes. Here's the other thing. I want a circle. If I click like this, it doesn't just, it'll put just a standard circle or I can draw one and resize it to the shape I want. Okay. I'm going to delete that one and I'm actually hit it one more time. Insert. Okay. There's that shape. I'm going to put this time. I'm going to put this one. And if I drag it, I can make it exactly the size that I want. Okay. Now when there are shapes that you've drawn on right here, you'll see that there's a little diamond right here. If I can use that to resize this, if I want it to, to be a little bit different shape, so you can really customize it. Okay. So let's get rid of our goofy little geometric shapes here. And uh, let's look at some other options. So when I add a picture, so I'm actually going to insert an image and we're going to use the search from the web option. Okay. And I think we're going to, we're going to look for flowers because flowers are always good. So pretty flowers here on May the 1st. Oh, it's a field of flowers. That's beautiful. But I think I like this one. So notice when I select it, I'm going to insert this uh, image. Now, it's much bigger than I want. I can uh, resize it. Here's the tip. Always grab from the corner. And if you hit the shift button, it will ensure that you're doing it symmetrically. Okay. So it doesn't uh, squish it up and have, you know, it off center. So I like this image because the color really pops here in the middle, but I'm not really liking all this excess stuff. Here's what's cool. I can double click on this image and I can go in here. Now I've got these drag bars so I could drag this in a little bit more and have it be square. But I think for the shape of the photo with the flowers, what I want to do is I want to go up here to this crop option and my masking option, I'm going to choose circle. So now when I click off, I've got this really cool circle photo that I've embedded in here. Okay. I can also select around my image and change the outside shape and color. So if I wanted to go in here and put a border around this and I want it because of that pink, I really want the uh, hot pink to be on the outside. I could do that as well. This comes in handy uh, for cropping like photos, um, doing like headshots for students. 
to get like a custom um, look and feel for everybody's photos. Okay. So let's take a look at some other options here. All right. Um, I want to look at our drawing that we, we opened up the copy of it. Okay. So one of the first things that I had on here, and I'm going to go up here. When you see this, it says change your view. I want to go over here and say view. And I'm going to zoom in right now I'm at 12%. That's how large this file is. So now I want to go up to 100%. Now this thing is huge. Let's take a look. So you've got the link in here and I'm going to pop that link back up there in case you just hopped on and you wanted to make sure you grab it. I'm going to show that link one more time so you can grab this document. Um, task one, which we just did, actually, we added in an image. It was a different flower image. The idea that you can add it in, we can search for it and you can reshape it. So that's what we did. We used the crop option and I can go in and add that big fill around it. And I can also customize the shape of it as well. So we did that. We also did this one as well. So I did it saying live PD, but this is how you can add in that word art and get that 3D effect um, using the word art feature, okay? So that was the first two we've done. So I wanna level up here and show you something else, okay? Now, this is really cool. This document, you can make a copy of it and you can also make a copy of it and share with your students. When I first created it, um, I have to say I got inspired by, um, Google guru, um, Juana Terrell, who had done an, uh, a presentation and she had a similar one to this. And I was like, that's the way to go because you get to practice it. You have something you can look at. And then also putting in these animated GIFs. That's the other benefit of using Google Drawings is that you can put in some animated GIFs. You could pre record something and drop it in there so students see exactly what you want them to do with an activity. So the nice thing is I've got these instructions here with tips and ideas along the side of our canvas. So let's go down here and look at this one right here. Let's look at creating uh, shapes and lines and creating actually a graphic organizer. So I'm gonna hop back over here. I've got an open canvas here and I'm gonna just make this background white and we're good to go. So I wanna insert some shapes. So this is a great way for you to create a graphic organizer or have your students create the graphic organizer. Having them do it and not saying, oh, it must be this particular bubble style map, but saying, create an organizer to show me how you think. So I'm gonna go here to my shape, okay? And I can add in one shape. I like the circle the way it is. I can copy and paste it and I can have three. Okay. Three uh, ideas that I need to have off of my my main idea. So I've got three ideas. So I'm going to put here for the main idea. We're going to go ahead and put that shape in there as well. I'm going to grab that one right there so we can have main idea. So here's what's cool is you have two options. One, you can, when you put in a shape, it also has the ability to type in it. So I can say main idea inside here or I can add another text box over it. Now, if you put it inside of the shape, you need to then still, you can format it, but you're gonna maybe wanna organize it so that it aligns either center aligns, top or bottom, if you wanna center it in the middle of the text. So those, notice once I've got something selected, now I'm in a text box, I've got all of these options. So I can actually increase this up to here. All right, I can change the color if I want. So now I've got this main idea and I've got these three things that I wanna include what were the three um, facts that support the main idea? I can draw in shapes to connect these ideas. So I'm gonna go to line and I'm just gonna grab a line. This is cool. When I hover over a shape, notice these purple dots. When I do that, I can grab this line. And when I come near the other shape, it's just like, oh, you'd like to connect it? Let's connect it here. Okay, I wanna connect another line. This time I want it to go down to that one and I'm gonna do one more and it's gonna go over to here. So now I've connected all these. Remember, you got to go back and go back to the select tool. So it lets those lines stay there. Check this out. Since I connected those on those four, on those purple points, now if I were to move this, it stays connected. Okay. So now I've got my main idea. So I can reshape this once I've got my basic format for my um, graphic organizer and I can change it out. I can go in here and I can use those fill options. And so I can color coordinate this to be different colors so it stands out. 
that I'm talking about three different things. There you go. So you can really make a customized graphic organizer. You saw that took no time whatsoever. What's really cool is um, I can create one of these and then share it out in Google Classroom and force a copy for each student. So if you have these different graphic organizers and you want to have one filled out from each student, you can do that um, very easily. So let's let's hop back over here and take a look at um, one of the next tasks. Well, let's go back up here. So we did the add a shape. So I made one that looks a little bit different, but you get the idea. So this animated GIF is going to walk you through those, those steps that I just showed you, which is to draw the circle, draw the other shape. So this one I did circles on top and boxes on the bottom. There's no right or wrong answer. It's just the idea that you're adding in those shapes and you're using the connecting line option to connect those ideas. Okay. So let's scroll down here and get to one, uh, what I think is one of my favorite ones. How many of your kids like emojis? How many of them are real quick to use emojis in uh, their text? Here's a great activity that you could do with the, at the beginning of your school year or right, quite frankly, right now as we're out for distance learning, you could make this just be kind of a fun activity for them to create an emoji that shows how they feel about being out of school right now. So this activity, I've brought in shapes and I'm using custom shapes here as well in a second. So I've just brought it, drawn that circle. I've added in the uh, different shapes to get the eyes and I've learned to flip and flop ideas. So I'm going to show you this live, but that animated GIF is there as well. Again, you can share this, how to get comfortable with Google drawings with your kids. All of the tasks in here are appropriate for your kids to try. Uh, and when I created this originally, uh, shared it with one of my friends and her elementary uh, kiddo, uh, one of her kids, she was like, yeah, I'll have her try it. Loved it. So um, this is a great way for you to be able to let them get practice. So here I am drawing that silly mouth. I free handed the, the shape of the, the tongue that I wanted. Now I'm drawing in that, that mouth shape and I'm using those, those lines and I can fill in and use all those different um, color coded and all of that good stuff. So what do you think? Creating emoji, would that be a really cool way to get your kids engaged? So I'm going to go back over here to my live PD one, and I'm going to actually create an emoji real quick. So I'm going to go to a shape. I'm going to drag in. There's, you know, there's my circle. And then I want to go up here and I can look and shop at the shapes and see if there's something that I like that I think would work for uh, an eye. So I think that that one works good for an eye. Obviously, that's not the right way. There's those diamonds to reshape. Here's the other important one. When you select an icon and you see that little handlebar out here, this lets me turn this. And so now I've moved my eye this way and I'm going to go ahead and fill it in. Okay. And then I want to duplicate it. So I'm going to hit that command C, command V. Okay. And I'm going to bring it over here. Now here's the other one. Wait, my eyes are going the same direction. I can right click over here and I can choose to rotate this and flip it horizontally. And now I've got matching eyes going inward. Okay. Now I can also add in some other elements, including the mouth and all of that. So let's go to insert. And if I want to do a custom mouth here, I'm going to draw the mouse, click on it. And this is a terrible mouth, but you get the idea. And I'm going to fill that in. Okay. And now I need to draw in a tongue. So I'm also use that again. I'm using that, that curve line. Okay. And I'm going to, here's the other thing I tell students that they can do is oftentimes I want uh, to draw something, but I don't want to mess what this is looking good right here. So I might tell them to draw actually um, off the canvas and then you can bring your items in. So I'm going to go here to curve and let me see here. Let's go to a curve line. There we go. Got the drawing tool. And this is going to be a goofy looking tongue, we think. And there we go. All right, kind of, sort of. Here's the cool thing. Maybe you dropped your points in the wrong place. If I double click on this, those points come back up so I can actually reshape something I've drawn. And um, I'm going to now click off this. I'm going to go ahead and fill that with the, uh, I'm going to make it a dark red tongue. Take off the transparent line here. Bring that in there. And I can resize this, make it a little bit smaller. Okay, I'm gonna fill this in here and make sure that this is emoji yellow and I can get rid of the outside line. And so that's just kind of a basic 
uh, emoji, but a really cool task you can have your students uh, do very easily. So that task is there in the um, your copy here so you can create your own emoji. So that was task number four. We got one more task we're going to take a look at um, and then we'll kind of recap what we've gone over here. So um, let's see here. If we go up one more, this one here is one of my favorites. This is the idea of creating a meme. So um, memes are the, the thing right now. Everybody, everybody understands or everybody appreciates a good meme, but uh, seeing them and laughing and finding them humorous is one, you know, thing, but being able to create your own is another option. So this is a great way for you to introduce um, a concept to your students um, or for them to summarize what they learned about a concept as well. So this is, of course, as a former ELA teacher, I had to go with William Shakespeare. Uh, we did the background in black and we dropped in an image. So again, use that image search. And then we just dropped in the text at the top and the bottom and we have to write or not to write. That is the question. So this is task number five on here that you can try with your kids. This is another great activity you can do with your students right now with distance learning. And you could say, hey, uh, create a meme um, about your quarantine experience. I would, of course, the caveat that it must be appropriate, um, but see what they come up with. So just bringing in that image, uh, typing in using that word art so that you have that nice big um, text there. Uh, and then adding text at the top and the bottom to create your meme. So that's another one of the activities you can do with your students that just makes uh, Google Drawings a really versatile tool to use with your learners. So we did our activities and I wanna, um, we, we, we jumped through a couple of these here. All right, um, so I just wanna recap that we covered some things and the goal of this session, and again, this was my first time doing this, was to do this, uh, to do it live. So hopefully if you've been tuning in live and you've learned something, that is fantastic. Um, if you're watching from the future, um, thanks for watching. Um, just to recap here that we've got, uh, these were our goals. I wanna make sure that um, you, uh, that I covered all this. So the goal was to learn some tics, tips and tricks for using Google Drawings. And I think definitely we did that. Um, I'd also like to say, um, we learned some ideas for using the Google Drawings to foster the five C's, you know, to foster the communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking. And we definitely uh, explore the features of Google Drawings. Um, it is a great tool with so many options and we could dive deeper and in, in, uh, in a future session, I'll uh, kind of level up and we'll dive deeper into some more advanced options and, and creation ideas. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in and uh, checking out this uh, session. Um, if you're interested in the presentation, um, I'm going to drop the link here. Um, you can uh, check out this uh, presentation. Um, put it up here again. Um, grab that um, and it will give you a link to the presentation so you can check it out at your leisure and maybe you wanted to look at some of the examples that I provided. So um, thank you guys uh, so much for tuning in for this uh, first of hopefully many live PDs. Hopefully you found this valuable and uh, this worked for you. Um, I'd appreciate your feedback uh, in the comments. Um, let me know what you think. Uh, you can check out uh, more uh, tech tips and, and resources on my website if you're not already a subscriber. And um, I would love for you to um, subscribe to get some more PD, um, live PD sessions. So thank you guys so much. I appreciate your time and thanks for tuning in. Bye.